Hello! In this lesson, we are going to talk about optimization and touch on its technical aspect. Optimization is one of the key elements of any algorithmic strategy. To create an effective strategy, the parameters of the trading robot should be optimized based on historical data. Today, we will talk about the parameters and how to evaluate the test results. What is optimization? Optimization is a process of going through all the parameters from the defined dataset in order to find the best strategy performance in different market conditions. While optimizing, TSLab evaluates different values in optimizable blocks and indicators from the specified range. Then it shows the results of what strategy performance would have been with one or another parameter value. After going through all possible values, we get a table of results and from it we can choose the parameters we need. I have already created a small script beforehand. The idea of the algorithm is as follows. We open a position when we have a bullish candle with a body larger than the ATR. We close the position with an equal stop loss or take profit. Now they are set at 30 cents each. For my strategy, I have chosen the oil futures data on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Before we get started, let's understand what strategy parameters are. The parameters are the settings of the strategy that influence the decision to enter and close the position. In this particular strategy, we have three parameters. The first parameter is the take profit size, it is 30 cents. The second parameter is the stop loss size, also 30 cents. The third parameter is the ATR period, by default it is set to 20. That's all, we don't have any more parameters here. Parameters can be optimizable and non-optimizable. An optimizable parameter is a parameter that can be changed during the optimization process by iterating over various options. In this case, it is the ATR. You can see that the window where the parameter value is set is not active right now, grayed out. This means the parameter can be optimized. If we make the window active, then the parameter's value that we input here will be fixed and we would not be able to optimize it. We will now make it optimizable to carry out the optimization process. We also have non-optimizable parameters. These are our take profit and stop loss targets. We do not have the ability to change them, so they cannot be optimized. A little later, we will make them optimizable too. So let's try to optimize our strategy by going through a single parameter, the ATR period. The whole optimization process takes place in the optimization tab. We go to it and see that indeed we have only one parameter, the ATR. Let's see what is what. We see the column value. It shows input values that are currently selected for the signals applied on the chart. If we now set the parameter here to 25 instead of 20, then the whole strategy will change and the ATR will work with a period of 25. If we do not want to optimize a parameter at this stage and want to set it manually instead, then we should not do it here, but from the optimization window. Here it is. This way we leave the possibility to optimize this parameter at a later stage. Next, the mean and max columns. These are the range boundaries for optimization. Here we enter the desired starting and ending values for each of the inputs. The column step shows the desired step that we use to go through the parameters. If we leave these default values, then in the optimization process we will go through all the parameters from 10 to 100 with a step of 5. TSLab will show us what the results of the strategy would have been if we had traded using the ATR with a period of 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. up to 100. 
The next column is Select. If we put a tick in the checkbox here, then this parameter will be included in the next optimization process. It is very useful when you have many parameters to optimize. Now we have only one parameter. Let's try to optimize it with given values. In order to start the optimization process, you need to click the Start button and the optimization will begin. OK? Our first optimization is complete. When the optimization is finished, we are redirected to the optimization results window. What do we see here? We see here a table with all possible results, with all possible combinations that we went through. In this case, this is our 8-year period from 100 to 10. We see that using the 8-year with a period of 100, we would get a profit of $23,970 for the entire test period. Using the minimum value, we would get a profit of $9,710. By the way, the results we have here is not in points, but in dollars. The standard size for a lot is 1,000 barrels. If you want to look at the points, you need to move the point here. It would be $23.97. Given that the lot is equal to 1,000, then the total result is $23,970 when trading one lot. OK, we have reviewed this first column. This is the net profit loss for the entire period. In this case, we have the period from July 2017 to October 2018. Let's go back to the Optimization Results tab and see other columns. The second column reflects the maximum drawdown. Maximum drawdown is the maximum drop from peak to bottom in the value of an instrument before a new peak is achieved. In other words, this is how much the price has moved away in the opposite direction against you from the maximum equity value. The next column shows the total number of trades. The average profit and loss column shows the average profit per trade. It is calculated as the total profit divided by the number of trades. In this case, the profit per trade is not so big, only $12.85. Given that one tick value in oil futures is only $10. Next is the percentage of winning trades. In our case, in 52% of our trades, we took the take profit, and in 48% of trades, we hit the stop loss. The profit factor column shows the ratio of the total profit to all losses. The profit for all positive trades is summed up and divided by the loss for all negative trades. That's how the profit factor is calculated. The good profit factor is considered to be from 1.5 and above. Overall, everything can depend on the strategy. As a rule, the greater the number of trades in a strategy, the more often it enters a position, leading to a smaller profit factor. Next is the recovery factor. It reflects how fast the system recovers from the drawdown. It represents the ratio of total profit to the maximum drawdown. If we divide the net profit by the maximum drawdown, then we will get this value, 2.43. Next, we have columns with parameter values that we optimize. At the moment, we have only one parameter, the ATR. Accordingly, we can see the value of this parameter and the strategy results with it. Further, by clicking on one or another result twice in this window, we can apply this set of parameters to the strategy and they become the default parameters. Here we have a parameter equal to 100 and we see that our profit has significantly increased. If we sort the values by profit, you may notice that the best results with the maximum profit and the least drawdown we got with the values from 80 to 100. Given that 100 is the upper limit of our range, it makes sense to expand it for further optimization. Let's set the starting and ending parameter values from 80 to 300 instead of 10 and 100. 
We will carry out optimization with them and see what change it is going to make. OK, 45 combinations to optimize or runs. These are the results. By clicking on a particular column, you can sort the results by drawdown in descending order or by profit in ascending order. I personally prefer using the recovery factor, which is the ratio of the maximum profit to the maximum drawdown. For a good trader, is equally important not only the amount of profit, but also the maximum drawdown made during the period of making this profit. It is better to control the risk. So these are the results we got. Again, we have the best results populated near the upper boundary. 290, 285, 280. And it would probably be logical to expand the range a little more. In general, when you carry out initial optimization, it is a good idea to use a wide range of parameters. For instance, from 10 to 1000 and also increase the step, so the optimization process would not last too long. First, we go through a wide range of parameters to find the likely area where the best parameters are concentrated. Then, in this area, we go granular to pick the best out of the best. Here, we can sort the results by the profit factor and see that the best results are concentrated in the area between 500 and 600. Once we have identified the area with the best values, such as the maximum profit and the minimum loss, then we can go to the optimization tab again. This time we set the starting and ending values of the range we identified earlier as a potential favorable area. Then we reduce the step to find a more specific parameter's value in this area. In this example it might not be highly relevant as there are only few runs during the optimization process. When you have many parameters here, then it might well be not 21 runs, but 21,000 runs or 210,000 runs. Then it will make a big difference. Therefore, it is always better using this method. First, optimize using a wide range of parameters with a big step. Then, go granular with a smaller step in a zone from the previous stage. In this case, let's filter the result by the profit factor. OK, here we have the best result. Double click on this row and we can see another picture. By the way, in this window, not only can you sort by one or another parameter, you can also apply different filters. For example, at a glance you can see that the drawdown is 9390, 8680. You may say to yourself, I am not at all interested in the parameters where the drawdown is more than 9000. Then you click on this icon and open the window with filters. Here you can write that the drawdown should be more than 8999. Because here we have a negative number, so it should be set as more. Click on the filter and we see that all options with a drawdown of 9000 and more have been eliminated. It became much easier to choose. In the same way, you can filter by the number of trades, by profit, etc. OK, let's pick a result from the table and go back to the script editor window. All previous optimization results can be closed now. What else can we optimize here? Take profit and stop loss values as we said earlier. At present, these values are fixed. To be able to optimize them, the absolute numbers in these two formulas must be replaced by constants. In the next video, we are going to build up our knowledge about the optimization of different parts of your trading bot. What's more, we'll look into the age-old question about algorithmic traders have always struggled to answer. Does my system have an age in the markets or is it just over-optimized? Stay in touch with us. I am Sylvia from Alga Trading Lab and this is my colleague Pavel. Share your thoughts. Do you optimize your trading system? Post comments and likes. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Why not become an affiliate and get the most of your traffic sources?
spread the word about our TS Lab courses and get amazing rewards. We are delighted to offer you our profitable and beneficial affiliate program. Anyone is welcome. It takes only three simple steps to become an affiliate. Check out the details on our website or click on the link below this video. Thank you for watching.